Imagine being locked up in a spacecraft mock-up with no windows to see the light of day, accompanied by five others you hardly knew before, and away from friends and family for 520 days. What sounds like everyone's nightmare is actually a dream come true for Romain Charles and Diego Urbina. Together with three Russians and one Chinese, the Frenchman and the Italo-Colombian make up the six-man crew of Mars 500, an international study to test human endurance and to help prepare for future missions to Mars and the Moon. After a tough selection process and halfway through the simulated mission to Mars, the two European crew members seem to be doing better than anyone could envisage. Our European crew members are coping with all the challenges very well. They have not been trained as astronauts. They have uh, normal jobs, so to say. Um, but uh, they've trained, of course, for the study and um, they enjoy what they are doing and you can see that from uh, the video blogs that they send and from all the mails that we receive from them. In their carefully planned daily routine, there's time for medical and technical experiments, physical exercise, spaceship maintenance, but also to enjoy space-style cocktails and even for grooming. That's if you're not afraid of Diego's astronaut haircut methods. And yearly celebrations are certainly not to be missed. The first Christmas that they celebrated was uh, on the 24th and then on the 25th. Um, then uh, there was an extra Christmas celebration for the Chinese crew member that is in there. And then finally uh, we followed the Russian tradition of uh, Christmas and uh, exchanged uh, presents uh, beginning of January. Moments of companionship that helped to build the necessary team spirit to deal with the darker moments. Let's see what's going on here. The CO2 levels. We don't have ventilation right now. We had a simulated emergency um, a couple of weeks ago where we simulated uh, the complete failure of power. Um, the crew dealt very uh, well with it. Uh, they were not prepared for this emergency uh, and they actually thought that this was real and not a simulation. So of course they were worried, uh, they were worried uh, for the equipment, for their lives maybe. Um, but then uh, at the end they mastered everything and they got uh, the system back uh, up running. The exercise looked in fact so real that it took the ground staff several days to convince the crew it was only a simulation to test their skills under stress. All the more important, now that the crew approaches one of its mission highlights. Well, we're now coming into a very interesting phase of the mission. Uh, soon going to orbit around Mars with a spaceship and dock to what's kind of been simulated a Mars lander which is already there. And then half the crew, uh, the Russian commander, our Isa Diego and uh, the Chinese Wang, will go into this Mars lander and then land on the surface of Mars. And will stay there for about 10 days. And during these 10 days, they will do three spacewalks. As part of the simulation, an unmanned spacecraft with fresh supplies for their journey back home will await them on the Red Planet. When the Mars lander hatch opens on the 1st of February, it'll be their last opportunity to get some new goods in. And they've already made their choices. Roman asked for some cheese. Uh, Diego wanted to have cola, also pizza. That's on top of Stieg Larsson's trilogy, various computer games, and even a Rubik's Cube to cope with monotony. But Elena, their psychologist and closest link to reality, knows what they would like the most is, for the moment, impossible to give them. They miss the fresh air, uh, to see the uh, trees, to see water, and of course uh, to see their friends, uh, to touch them. A better understanding of the effects of isolation on the psychological well-being of the crew, their nervous system and hormone levels is one of the main objectives of Mars 500. But it's also a crucial piece of information to help astronauts currently living in the International Space Station and prepare for future long-term missions in the solar system.